In this video, we will talk about properties of rational functions. First, let's define what a rational function happens to be. So it's going to be the ratio of polynomial functions. And it looks like this. This is the abbreviation or notation. It's r of x is equal to p of x over q of x, where p and q are polynomial functions. and q is not a zero polynomial. The domain of these rational functions is all real numbers except where q of x equals 0. Because when q of x does equal 0, then we have an undefined function, which is a restriction or a break in our domain. The first set of problems, we will find the domain of each. And remember, we said the denominator, or q of x, could not be equal to 0. So what we have to do is set that denominator equal to 0 and find out what value is a restriction. So we set x minus 3 equal to 0. We solve, and we get x equals positive 3. And so our domain, and I'll write it in two different ways, uh, in set builder notation is x such that x cannot be equal to 3. In interval notation, it's in negative infinity to 3, not including 3, union 3 to infinity. For the second problem, we will still set the denominator equal to 0 and solve the quadratic. Now, I choose to solve it by factoring, but you could use the quadratic formula if you choose. So we set it equal to 0. So the factors are 3x and x. We have a 2 and we have a 1 plus 2 minus 1. And again, you can go ahead and check that out to make sure that it is accurate. Uh, so from here, you set the factors equal to 0. So 3x minus 1 is equal to 0 x plus 2 is equal to 0, and so x is equal to 1 third, and x is equal to negative 2. So these are your two restrictions. So in set builder notation, the domain is going to be x such that x cannot equal negative 2 and positive 1 third. And in interval notation, it's going to be negative infinity to the first restriction, which is negative 2, union between the two restrictions, which is negative 2 to 1 third, and then from the highest restriction to infinity, so 1 third to positive infinity. The last problem, again, we will set the denominator equal to 0, so x to the fourth minus 1 is equal to 0, so x to the fourth is equal to 1, and so x is equal to plus or minus 1. So positive 1 or negative 1 are both restrictions. So again, doing this in both ways, we have the domain, which is in set builder, x such that x cannot equal 1 and also negative 1. Sorry for my horrible braces, I'm trying. <clears throat> and in interval notation, it will be negative infinity to the lowest break, which is negative 1, union, negative 1 to 1, union, 1 to infinity. A rational function is in lowest terms if p of x and q of x have no common factors. There's another property that we need to discuss when dealing with these rational functions, and that is the zeros of the numerator and the zeros of the denominator. So zeros of the numerator represent the x-intercepts. 
to find the zeros of the num to find the x-intercepts, we set this, uh, the the uh, polynomial function that is our numerator equal to zero and solve. However, zeros of the denominator, which we previously found as part of our domain, represent the vertical asymptotes. The vertical asymptotes are where the function is undefined for that particular x value. So in the graph, what you'll notice is that you'll have a graph, you'll have a vertical asymptote somewhere in the graph where it is undefined, and your graph will get closer and closer to that vertical asymptote, but never cross and never touch that vertical asymptote. And it goes from both ways. So you might have a graph that another branch of the graph that looks like this, and again, it gets closer and closer to that vertical asymptote, but can never cross. So it does represent a break in the graph. It's a vertical line, always a vertical line. Um, and again, it's called the vertical asymptote. It's very important to graphing rational functions. For these last two problems, we'll take these functions and we'll find the x-intercepts and the vertical asymptotes. Now, the x-intercepts are the zeros of the numerator. So we set the numerator equal to zero and we solve. So we get x is equal to negative 3, so the x-intercept is negative 3 comma 0. Zeros of your denominator, however, represent something completely different. We still set it equal to 0 and solve, but now when we get this x is equal to negative 1, it's called a vertical asymptote. So at x equals positive 1, we're going to have a vertical asymptote and our graph can actually never touch, can never be positive 1, we can never have a positive 1 input for that uh, this particular rational function. For number 2, again we do the same thing, so we have x squared minus 9 is equal to 0, and this will give us the x-intercepts. This then gives us x squared is equal to 9, which is x is equal to plus or minus 3. So we have two x-intercepts, and I'll write them in ordered pair format. We have 3 comma 0, and we have also negative 3 comma 0. And do the same for the denominator, so x squared plus 4x minus 21 is equal to 0. So I choose to factor this. You could also choose to do the quadratic formula. This is all very similar, especially with the denominators. It's all very similar to what we did with the domain. We found the restrictions in the domain. We just now have a name for those restrictions called vertical asymptotes. So we have x and we have x, and we have 7 and 3, and this will be a positive 7 and a negative 3. This gives us two vertical asymptotes, one at negative 7 and one at positive 3. Oh, burgle bear.